Chopping Mall, the 1986 film was distributed by Concord Pictures and produced by Julie Corman. Uh, she does happen to be Roger Corman's wife. The film was originally released under the title Kill Bots, but after being re-released under the name Chopping Mall, the film did considerably better. The film does open up with a presentation at the Park Plaza Mall. They are introducing the new security robot system that the facility will be implementing. The robots are intended to neutralize trespassers with the use of tasers, tranquilizers, and later in the film, for some reason, lasers, which that's definitely asking for a lawsuit there, especially if, say, you happen to get locked into the mall and you just can't seem to get out. So the robots are programmed to recognize mall employees with the use of an ID badge or a scan, which they compare to the the user's face. Early in the film, things do go wrong with the cause of a lightning storm. It causes a short in the system and the robot's programming just pretty much goes haywire. That same evening, a group of teenagers makes the mistake of planning an after-hours party in a furniture store in which three of the group members happen to work in. The first members of the mall crew to be murdered are the technicians, so there is no way the robots could be reprogrammed, there's no way anyone can be alerted, and once they do go on their nightly rounds, the first pair that they do encounter from that group is a couple who wandered out into the mall, guy goes out to get a pack of cigarettes for his girlfriend, she goes looking for him because he takes too long, and they are both killed off. It isn't long before the group becomes aware of what is going on and they quickly begin making an effort to fend for themselves and oddly enough, I don't know if it's just the fact that the movie is set in a mall or if malls in the 80s had a similar design or setup, but for some odd reason it tends to remind me of Dawn of the Dead since some of the stores have the sliding blocking glass doors and coincidentally they both have a, a gun shop located inside of the mall. From here on, the number of robots and the number of teenagers begins to dwindle. The control center is never really reached, but they are able to stop the robots, and it's not really a story with a very strong plot. There really isn't too much going there as far as character development, although you do get some information before the madness does start. But it's a, it's a fairly basic slasher, not too much gore. It is a film on a limited budget, but I was familiar with the film's cult status. I had seen it a long time ago when I was still just a kid. Uh, Rewatched it just out of nostalgia, and I don't know. For some reason, I was just expecting a little bit more. Um, you know, for some reason, just the whole fact that everyone talks about it so much, and I was just think I was hoping to be wowed, and I actually felt differently the second time watching it. It definitely did helped me appreciate more the cheesiness of the film as, as well as the, the weird dialogue and the quirky characters. So, I don't know, sometimes I just have to watch something twice before I can really see where it's coming from or before I can really appreciate it. But I can say, yes, it was a good film. It was enjoyable. And compared to today's B flicks, it was not, it was not bad. It was actually really great. Um, most of today's B flicks unfortunately have very unseasoned actors or they're very hammy. But this was actually a group of people who knew what they were doing. They were just operating on a limited budget. Surprising for me, Dick Miller also appears in the film. He plays Walter Paisley, who is a janitor. He's also an early victim of the robots. I mostly know him as Willie from Demon Knight, and he was also Buck Gardner in the 1978 film Piranha. At 30 minutes and 55 seconds into the film, you can hear Mike, one of the furniture store employees, uttering the phrase, Klaatu Barada Nikto, to one of the robots who has asked to see his ID badge. He uses it more as a banishing command, you know, kind of just, you know, here's the card, get out of my face, let me go about my business. Unfortunately, Mike is killed off, but this is a phrase which does turn up quite a bit in science fiction films. It did originate in the 1951, The Day the Earth Stood Still, and it was used sort of as a, a deactivation command or a, or a failsafe type switch. The alien Klato has taught these words to Helen Benson, who is the protagonist in the film as well. He lets her know that if anything were to happen to him, she should say these words to Gort, the robot, in order to 
prevent the destruction of the earth. And although the words have never really been officially translated, there has been some speculation on their meaning. According to an article published in Fantastic Film Magazine uh, in 1978, the language of Quato was the title of that article. The two speculated translations are stop barbarism, or a more rough translation is I die, repair me, do not retaliate. And that does reference the film directly, whereas Clato has passed, Gord is trying to release his body from a cell, Helen repeats the phrase, and Gord takes Helen, as well as Clato's body, to the spaceship where Clato is revived, resuscitated, reanimated, however you'd like to see that. I just find it very interesting that it's a phrase that often pops up in science fiction, and usually it's in a theme in which machines are designed to protect people or humans from themselves. And unfortunately, there's some sort of misuse of power or an abuse of power on the machine's part. So this is what the phrase is used for in order to deactivate the, uh, I guess, the kill switch. But that is pretty much all I have for you guys today. I will talk to you later. Thank you. Have a nice day.